Hey everyone, it's Ergo Josh here again with another video. Today I want to show you my top 5 sketching brushes that I use in Procreate. So let's get right into it. Um, I've been using Procreate for a year plus now, and I've done a lot of paintings as you can see. And I've spent a lot of time um, in the settings, the brush settings, getting used to different things and um, making my own finely tuned brushes for every single little thing that I need done. And I'm going to show you them right now. So I'm going to start off by making a new canvas and let's get started. So Procreate brushes are located right here where the brush um, icon is. And as you can see, they have a lot of these different categories that you can pick from that are already pre-installed with the program. They are really great brushes and I encourage you guys to get used to them. But you can also make your own category, as you can see by that little plus icon and you can go ahead and make your own category and then add your own brushes by duplicating these and then pulling them over into that category. Now this one you see here is called Portraits. That's the one I have made for myself um, for all of my brushes. And you can tell these are all custom because they all have the logo next to them. Um, a default brush doesn't have any logos next to it. So you can see I have quite a few brushes here, <laughs> but I use almost every single one of them um, for every painting or sketch that I do. But today I'm just gonna go over these top five right here. And I use these for my sketches or for just getting any drawing started. So the first brush that I like to use is called the pencil eraser brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it and it's called pencil eras eraser because I use it for both the pencil and eraser. It's usually what I use to start off my sketches. Um, so let's make sure the eraser is set to it. Okay. Um, so what I do is when I'm starting a sketch, I'll go ahead and I'll start drawing. And then if I find something that I want to change or erase or kind of make thinner, I'll double tap, it'll switch to the eraser and then I can start erasing. And so this makes sketching and figuring out ideas really, really quick and extremely intuitive, which is just fantastic because the iPad in and of itself is already a fantastic program for getting something quickly done, um, just getting a feel for what's going on. It's, it's really, really similar to having a sketchbook, um, especially because it's so small and portable. So I love this feature um, with the new Apple Pencil, and I love the fact that um, I can just switch back and forth. And a lot of people used to complain that, oh, there's no eraser on the Apple Pencil. Well, now you really don't need one. Um, but yeah, getting into the brush itself, it's called, I, st I told you why it's called Pencil Eraser, but um, another reason why it's so important for me is because it stays consistent with the tip. So. What I'm talking about is when you draw with a pencil in real life, the tip stays the same thickness. It doesn't really um, become any wider or thinner. And in digital art, a lot of the brushes that you'll find anywhere always get really thick when you press hard and then really thin when you press lightly. But as you can see with this brush, it's pretty much the same. It's a little bit thicker, but it's pretty much the same thickness. So it works like a real pencil. Um, also, I wanted the grain to be very, it's noticeable, but not too noticeable. So for example, if I go to pick one of the default sketching brushes, um, like the technical pencil, if I draw that, like see how rough the grain is. And for my sketches and my style, I don't really like that much. I like it to feel very, very soft and like sandy. So I didn't like that, but the other thing I didn't like about this brush is what you see here. It tapers a lot. And in real life, a brush doesn't do that unless you intentionally do that. So if I wanted to taper, I could switch back to my pencil eraser and I can taper it off. And I can taper it off by speed as well. But I don't want it to happen if I'm not trying to make it happen. So another default brush that had something I liked but I didn't really like all of it was um, the 6B pencil brush. So with this one, it's pretty consistent, but as you can see, it quickly gets extremely dark. And 
the size changes a lot. Like look at that versus that. I didn't like that. That's not how pencils work in real life. They stay the same thickness basically until you switch to using the tilted edge. And I don't really feel like I want to ever use that. And I don't think anyone really switches to the side edge of using their pencil unless they're doing a specific type of drawing. Like, you know, those those figure drawings that people do where they start to shade it in and they hold their pencil like this. And, you know, th that's a different type of drawing. But for the type of stuff I want to do, I don't want any tilt. I don't want the size changing on me. I only change it here. So, yeah. And then I combine those two things. Oh, another thing. Um, the brush shape for this brush, I'll show you, is a rectangle. And what Procreate does is it jitters that rectangle around to give you different varieties of sh like strokes. I don't like that. And <laughs> I decided to make my pencil eraser brush have a rounded shape. So when I draw, it doesn't really change. It stays consistent, which is something I feel like mimics reality closer. And although this is digital art, I feel like there's so much more interest in realistic work. Like the there's something about traditional art that just looks better in general. I think most people would agree, but digitally is just a fantastic workflow because you can do anything you want without spending money on paints, different supplies. So I feel like I want to combine those two things. And that's why I try my best to make sure each tool that I use mimics what I want it to look like in reality. So yeah, that's my pencil eraser brush. Next up, we have the dry brush or the damp brush. This brush is pretty much like a paint brush and I use it for um, getting the initial parts of a painting kind of starting to blend together. So I'll show you um, one of my artworks that I use it on this one. In this area with his eyes and his nose, this is where I use this uh, dry brush. And I'm going to actually make another layer so I can paint on it without ruining the painting. Um, but as you can see, it makes a very nice, consistent, thick, um, grainy pattern. But it's also very light, even though I'm using black. And I can go in heavy and make a very dark tone. So I don't have to switch colors if I'm using a monotone, um, if I'm doing a monotone drawing, I can just stick with black or switch with white or switch to white if I need to. So I can do these light tones and I can do these dark tones. But the other thing is, if I use a light touch, I can begin to blend them together. And the blending begins to really naturally remove some of the graininess to it. And you get this really rich texture that I love so much. But yeah, it's, it's really fantastic. And so that's why you see there's some grain here, but it's smoother here. And it just gives you this really rich dynamic feel to the work. And so I use that a lot. Um, even in the beginning of the eyes, you can see some of that grain is there because that's how I started off building up the tones. Um, so this is one of my favorite brushes to use. And I use it sketching kind of in the later phase. I don't really use it to, you know, start drawing lines and to get the anatomy right. But I use it to add some depth and to help it be more interesting. And uh, what else? So this brush is um, a default brush that comes with Procreate. It's pretty much, I haven't done much to it at all. Um, so yeah, just find it. I think it's, let's see. Yep, it's right here. Okay, so what I did do to it, um, as you can see the damp brush, it has a much rougher texture to it. What I did was, yeah, I made it this same little circular shape and I made the grain very fine, very rich, sandy. So I like that kind of look in my artwork. And so that's the only thing I did to it. And then everything else pretty much stayed the same. And that concludes my damp brush. Next up, um, a very recognizable brush <laughs> is the soft brush. And so this is your typical Photoshop default soft airbrush. And I love it. It does everything that you should expect it to do. It's perfectly um, anti-aliased, it's great, it blends well, it just does what you would expect it to do. Um, what I like to use this brush for is when I'm doing smudging. And so when I smudge, I like to move things around a little bit. I don't like to smudge too much in my drawings these days, but it's very 
easy to blend values with this. So I can easily come in. And as you can see here, like I'm getting really nice, really nice soft blending. And this is where the processor really helps because if you try to take this brush to this size, this canvas is 4,000 by 4,000. So if you take it all the way up to this size and you try to do this in Photoshop, <laughs> it's not going to go too well unless you have a monster computer. But as you can see here, I'm just blending everything perfectly and it's there's nothing. There's no lag. And that's why I love Procreate and the iPad. But yeah, I love this brush. Um, I will recommend to you guys not to get too crazy with it. It is exactly the same as it is default. I took it from the airbrushing and it's right here, soft brush. These other things that say airbrush, eh, I don't really like them because they have an edge to them. So see like it has a very, it's not really an edge, but it's much more defined than the soft brush. So I don't really have a use for those. And then they have like the spray paints and these are just way too crazy for me. So the only one I like to use is the soft brush. And uh, I think a lot of you guys will enjoy using this. It's very easy to use and it just works perfectly right out of the box. Next up, we have the pen pencil. So as the name kind of implies, let me clear the canvas. Uh, Clear. Yeah. Okay. So as the name implies, it's a pencil brush, but I modified it so that it's extremely dense like a pen. I use this when I want to add little details to um, a sketch that's still in the kind of light phase. So for example, I can do something like this. If you watch anime, you'll know exactly what I'm getting at. Like you can ghost the idea of a mouth and then use a lighter pencil to kind of add the rest of the details and add a shadow underneath, right? That's just a diagram of it, but where I did actually do it, I'll go back to the same drawing. <laughs> that looks so bad. Uh, let me clear it real quick. So here, you see that really dark area right there, right there, suggesting that his mouth is kind of open in the corners and the depth of his nose and the corners here kind of want to add this like graphic look to it. That's why I use a pen pencil brush. Um, some other areas in this shirt. Yeah, this is one of the most successful drawings I did recently. So I'm going to keep using it <laughs> to suggest um, how to use these brushes. But yeah, it's it's really, really straightforward brush. Um, I think I started with the pencil eraser brush. So if you make that brush, what you do is you go into it. Yeah. I think I added a little bit more grain. They have a lot of default grain textures, by the way, which is fantastic. Like, look at all these. Like, that's awesome. Um, it's so worth 10 bucks if you guys are interested in it. But uh, yeah, I made it taper a lot. So that's a big thing. And I also um, just made the default size a lot bigger. So this brush can get pretty big. Am I using the same brush? Yeah, it can get pretty big. It loses its taper at that point, but yeah, it's it's extremely useful. That uh, concludes my pen pencil pen pencil brush. Now the fan final brush is six B pencil sketch brush. So this is the same thing as the original six B brush, except I added. Let me make it more dense. I made it smaller. Um, and I made it taper at the beginning a lot. And so this brush, it's, it's hard to explain its use. I use it for adding a little bit more texture and a little bit more contrast. And a lot of times I'll use it to add, to actually shade. I left the taper in, as you can see here, it's thicker when I do that, but when I do it really head on, it's a lot thinner. So yeah, I use it to add a lot of texture. Sometimes I want to get in somewhere, like let's go back to our favorite guy here. Um, one place I used it is like, if I want to just make something darker using that damp brush, it blends a little bit too much when you're going somewhere really detailed. And so sometimes you just want to, just want to make something like this darker, keep it really rich and grainy. And that's what I use this brush for. 
And sometimes when I want to do eyelashes, but I don't want to be super, super uh, obvious with them, I would just want them to suggest the idea of eyelashes. I'll use this brush because as you can see here, it gives you that sense of eyelashes without being super obvious about them like you would see on a high resolution celebrity glamour shot. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to suggest the idea of eyelashes. And so this is where this brush is really good. So like for example, this area, if I just want to make that little lighter area a little bit darker, just come in with this brush and it does the trick and it doesn't look like anything's happened. Um, you can't see any of the individual strokes because it's so dark. I mean, because it's so, so rich and come in here and do that kind of blend this area a little bit more. So you get the idea of kind of why I use this brush. I always like keeping it handy. And yeah, that concludes my five sketch brushes. So um, next up, I'm going to do a sketch. I think I actually have it here. <laughs> this is like messing with you guys because it's like future past, but this is the sketch I'm going to do um, in the time lapse that's coming up in a few moments. And I use, um, let's see. I think I used every single brush. I used, I think I used every single brush except for the damp brush. But when I, it's still not finished, but I think when I do finish it and post it on Instagram, I think I'll probably end up using the damp brush a little bit to get more shadows and pop in some areas. But I will see you guys in the time lapse and I hope you guys enjoy it. I will be back afterwards to give you some final tips and see you guys off.
Okay, I'm back. So, um, if you guys noticed, the time lapse didn't really finish with this drawing, and that's because drawing in this way, this format for you guys to see on YouTube is really difficult for me. Um, the iPad is flat, and I really don't like that. I like it to be angled face towards me, but right now I don't have the ability to film myself with the iPad angled like that. Um, so please forgive me for that. I, I was just, there's a bright light right there. Um, it was getting really hot and I just was like, all right, I need to sit on the couch somewhere and record instead of just trying to force myself to do something that's not going to end up very good um, and then try to show it to you guys. And also my um, phone was running out of space, so I definitely had to stop at that point. So even though I've gone over my brushes and I've showed you guys a lot of why um, it's effective to use the ideas that I've suggested to you, um, my my final tip that's really important is that if you're just getting the iPad and maybe you have one and you're getting Procreate, maybe you're seeing this and you're thinking about getting it for Christmas or you got it as a gift, really spend some time getting used to the program. It's a unique program. It's not like Photoshop. It's very unique. Um, it's so unique that, believe it or not, I can tell if... Um, someone is using Procreate for a drawing. I can see it. There's just some things in Procreate that the brushes are just so iconic that I can tell, oh, that was done in Procreate. And so I say that to tell you guys that if you get it and you feel frustrated, don't immediately waste your time looking online for new brushes, um, even though that's probably how you found this video. <laughs> I'm contradicting myself. But don't spend too much time looking for new brushes. Um, Spend some time getting used to the brushes that are there. Spend some time getting in these settings, getting used to what everything does, seeing what doesn't matter to you, getting how it, getting used to how it feels, um, mastering the the pressure curve. You know, this is my little adjusted pressure curve for what I like to do. I have a little bit of a heavy hand, and I wanted to change that, um, so I didn't have like carpal tunnel at the end of the day. So just get used to it. It's really going to benefit you. And if you spend some time getting used to it, you're going to be able to make a lot better stuff than anyone else because you are used to it. You know, a lot of why I'm pretty good at Procreate is because I've been using it for a year, um, not because I'm some really good artist that can just jump on any program. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned from it. Um, I really hope you learned from it. <laughs> Uh, if you're interested in more of my artwork in general, you can feel free to look at my Instagram. I link everything below. If you're interested in how I film this video or anything or the iPad or my protector, check out my Amazon link. Um, it does help me out if you use that link just for a disclosure. You can click on that one link and then everything is there categorized. Really easy for you to use. So I hope you guys look at that and hopefully you'll find something that can help you out. And yeah, I am really happy to have been finally been able to finish this video. This was really tough for me, um, filming and drawing live kind of in this format. And I can't wait to show you guys more stuff. I can't wait to help you guys out with more information. Um, feel free to leave any comments or feedback and recommendations or something that you want to see in the future. Um, I'm going to read all the comments as I usually do and respond to as many of them as I can. Um, usually by the time I make another video, that's when I stop looking at the comments. And I can't wait to see what you guys um, do with any of the tips or pencils that I have suggested to you. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.